not wondering somebody in the back, Charles? Uh, but somebody in the back be willing to forward the slide. Okay. There seems to be a learning curve sure. with this device. And my talk is very short. By the time I learn to use this, my talk will be over. Uh, so this is the first four or five slides to start with this one. There are probably five or six slides. Uh, so far the talks have been absolutely fascinating uh, and have dealt with the uh, nature of consciousness in some sort of ultimate way. Uh, my uh, presentation is going to be short and on uh, a really quite different wavelength. Uh, I'm going to put on my psychologist hat today uh, for 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, I've, almost everything I've done professionally <coughs> for the last 30 years has had to do with transformation, self-transformation, personal transformation, personal growth. Uh, and that seems to me a very pertinent topic for the kind of thing we're all going to be shooting for here. And I'm not an expert on the more uh, philosophical, technical side of things. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about consciousness in a very psychological, personal sense. and. Uh, transformation of consciousness in that way and how that relates to our uh, general interest. Uh, there are various ways to experience the world and so uh, that's kind of the way I'm talking about consciousness now, not in the philosophical sense of what it is like, like Chalmers does, not in the metaphysical sense, I love those things, but this is more like what kind of world do you live in, what is your conscious experience in the world. Uh, these things are changing. I'm not going to really lecture about this one. Uh, it just speaks for itself that as time is going by, uh, the world culture is changing from conservative to the liberal, traditional, modern, postmodern, and we see various values and orientations and ideas about the truth coming with that. Uh, let's go to the next slide, and thank you so much for running that. Uh, what I do want to talk about a little bit is what kind of world do I live in? Uh, because each of us lives in a universal world uh, that we inhabit, and uh, we're at the center of it unless we're quite advanced spiritually. Uh, so there are these various orientations, egocentric, ethnocentric, uh, world-centric, those are a few of them. Uh, and they speak for themselves. I don't think uh, I'm just really introducing these ideas I'm not lecturing about them in depth, and I don't think I need to. Uh, we know what it's like to be egocentric. There are people all around that are egocentric. Uh, some of them are very bright. I've uh, had a number of academics that perfectly fit the American Psychological Association of Narcissistic Personality and have sort of students in that category. Uh, in fact, I've met so many that I have red lights at the wall. I have been get in the room with a narcissistic personality that sort of goes zing. No, I'm not your soulmate from a previous lifetime. No, and you know. Don't ask any favors from me, this whole story. But anyway, uh, you know, they have a certain pattern of behavior that you, you get used to uh, if you've had to deal with them. But, uh, you know, so I'm just making the point that you can even be an adult and be very egocentric. The whole world is sort of there for you. Uh, the whole world is your own cookie jar. Uh, and then we have vast populations in the world today that are what we have to call ethnocentric. Uh, their main concern and their reality is their own cultural group and their own, or their own country. I uh, just came from Paris where uh, uh, the uh, French team came in and just won the next to the last game, you know, they uh, didn't win the last game. I mean, uh, who won the last four? Portuguese. But I mean, there were uh, crowds of young men roaring and, you know, drunk and around the streets and so Well. Good for them. Well, that's uh, that's ethnocentric. Uh, I don't mean that's all they are, of course. Uh, but in the world today, we're seeing incredible uh, conflicts developing all over the place, from ISIS to the Middle East. Uh, England's now broken off. France is thinking about breaking. I mean, it's all about uh, ethnocentrism in uh, not in a real negative way, but identification with your own group. French, I'm sick of this, I'm sick of all these people coming in from the Middle East, doing what the hell are they doing here, uh, and so on. So my orientation, in, in the ethnocentric orientation, is I identify with a particular group, a particular culture. Uh, actually, somewhere in between these two is the family. And I don't have that label here, but as we grow up, we identify with their family, and that's the, per 
first order of priority. That's who we worry about first. Uh, with all these shootings in the United States, gun sales have gone up tremendously. You think people would not buy guns? You know, no, no. They're buying more guns. Have a gun in your house. Gun, you have to protect yourself, protect your family. It's about your family. So identify as uh, eth egocentric, family centric, ethnocentric, which can any mean anything from a, a resident of the state of Georgia. Just keep out of here. You know, the deep south in the U.S. have this sort of orientation. Uh, or the nation, the nation you belong to, or the religion, you get very strong. So uh, when that gets rolling uh, and becomes powerful, it, it's really hard to have the cosmic view of the world uh, because it's very limiting. Uh, so, and then what we'd like to see is more people that are world-centric, at least. Uh, now that is closely related to being ecocentric, centric about the whole world. Uh, about the whole uh, world, the planet Earth, I should say, uh, the ecology, uh, global warming, and issues like that, that would be more e e ecocentric. But to be really ecocentric in this way, you pretty much have to be world centric. Uh, and then there's, you can go beyond that in the spiritual traditions and talk about cosmocentric. I'm a living being, I'm part of a living cosmos, and much of our dialogue here comes from that perspective. Okay. Now, my only point here in this very short talk is to say, in order to act from this perspective, you kind of have to get there. Because if you don't identify with it, you don't respond in those terms. You know, deal with your own brand. I ain't the time for this. I got to take care of my family. I can't tell you how many meetings I have been to, organized, I've been associated with that are deeply concerned about the ecology of the earth. Uh, global warming issues like that. I think until this year I never saw a person of color in any of them. Now, what, what is it that Afro-Americans don't give a hoot about the world? Uh, the, the Latinos don't care? No, no, no. They got, they're down here at a little lower level. They're trying to keep their families alive. They're trying to find food. They're just trying to get along out on the street. They don't have time to come and you know, listen to this. So, my point is, uh, we have a real concern with how to move up in this. Now, you can be cosmocentric and very concerned about your family and your loved ones, and so there's no limitation. But if you're trapped at a lower level, if that's everything where your energy is, that's where that's going to go. Uh, the kind of goals we have in this organization, as I understand it, are uh, somewhere between world-centric and cosmocentric. Understanding consciousness is universal, and shared throughout the planet and uh, maybe throughout life as a whole. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, I'm sorry, go back to the So I know this is tacky. <laughs> You've all seen this decades ago, but Maslow and Piaget back in the 60s, Jean Piaget, were among the first people to really look at uh, development, human development in terms of stages. Maslow, in terms of these needs, hierarchy of needs, we're all familiar with those. So uh, they've been very influential in all sorts of uh, places. Uh, and uh, over on the other side, in the more cognitive domain, PGA introduces the idea of levels of uh, mental development. So these are fairly distinct levels. Go to the next slide. Uh, the person, please, and the person that uh, has really done the most with this, I think, really excellent work, fairly recently, is Robert Keegan at Harvard. Uh, who has uh, interviewed uh, hundreds of people uh, to find out how they experience the world, what their world is like. Uh, and he's developed these uh, levels. They're fairly distinct levels. You can define them, you can study them. Uh, they parallel PHA's levels and they're very close to Keegan's levels. So uh, we start, and actually this thing's kind of upside down. Impulsive mind that's the mind of a child. Uh, it's impulsive, it's uh, embedded in the family and so on. Uh, above that, the imperial mind, there lots of names for this, but the mind of the child, uh, able to do logic and reasoning, associated with the family, a little bit of very self-absorbed uh, self though. At, at this stage, uh, even through adolescence, young people are what we call perceptually bound. Uh, they don't see the world from anybody else's point of view. For a young child, that means literally, see, 
what's this room look like from uh, Stefan's seat back there? And, and you'll get a description from a five-year-old that's a perfect description of the way I'm seeing the world up here. Because uh, they're perceptually about a little bit older, and teenagers will give you Stefan's experience, but what you'll really hear is their experience. So even teenagers are perceptually bound when it comes to empathy. Uh, so, uh, as we go on up to socialized mind, this is the uh, majority of adults in the educated world, 60% or more. Uh, and if you have the socialized mind, you may well be motivated to very uh, altruistic goals, and concerned about social justice, concerned about society, but you will do it in a social context. You will want to be with others, and ultimately you will expend most of your energy doing things that are approved by your group. Uh, you won't be out on your own. Uh, so they look really good. I found that most of the doctoral students in my program are all about social justice. It's a big deal. Uh, they're all socialized line, almost to, to the person. That is, that's the party line at the school. They're not independent. Uh, and, the, and then as we grow on self-authoring mind, is, and there are several names for these, but this is when the individual starts to become independent, think for themselves. There's a real struggle moving to that one. Uh, because you have to then be able to give up your commitment to the society and to be like everybody else. So offering mind, so that's uh, that's a, a, a first a real autonomy, thinking for oneself, and then the self-transforming mind. This is we see this very rarely. Self-transforming mind is the mind of a person who understands they will change, that life changes, that experience is fluid. Uh, so let's go to the next one. Uh, interestingly, almost everyone at these highest levels, there's another one even above that, the alchemical mind sometimes, they're almost all meditators. Uh, they're almost all meditators, been meditating for years. Uh, and uh, Keegan pointed out that very few people get to these higher levels until they're uh, somewhere near midline, 40 or beyond. And one of his hopes for the world is that with the average population getting older and older, will find more people gravitating to these higher levels. Well, I just finished a study with a student. We're getting ready to publish. Uh, we've interviewed literally hundreds of people that go all the way to the top, and they're very hard to find. You have to look for uh, advanced Dzogchen meditation communities and uh, such as that. Uh, people who have been meditating, people who have been in the business of self-growth and development. Almost everyone near the top. Uh, no matter who they are, and what you talk to them, they spend a lot of time, they spend a lot of time thinking about their own growth and development, not the real egotistic sense. But they've meditated, they're aware of their diet, uh, they exercise, they do stuff to grow, and they exercise their mind. So as you get closer and closer to the top, uh, the sense of self actually begins to dissolve. And people shift from this, uh, what seems like a more, uh, a more egotistical, selfish orientation down at the lower levels uh, up to a kind of uh, professional orientation that's still self-oriented. And then as you go on up from there, people are more and more concerned about the world around them. Things begin to become altruistic. Even to the highest level, you see a kind of remarkable altruism in which people uh, have very little sense of themselves as separate individuals and their greatest joy is experiencing working for others. I talked to one man who was a 40, 50 year old Zogchen meditator, actually remembered his lifetime several lifetimes back. Uh, his greatest joy was empathizing with the suffering of other human beings. He would sit with tears would run down his face. But he was connected to this bigger cosmos that we, we've been talking about all along. Now, uh, so, how do we, what, uh, from a very practical psychologist's point of view, if we're going to move the world forward, we have to move more people up this, you know, ladder as it were, we have to ways to move them forward. And uh, there are people who been thinking about that for a long time, there's no real easy solution. One of them is to meditate. Just, if practically any kind of meditation will move you forward. Probably, uh, Ken Wilber says, uh, he thinks it's about five years to jump. Uh, category. I don't know whether it's 
true or not, but the way we grow is we're, we get to a position where we can see who we are from an objective point of view. We identify with the next level, and then you have to get back to that and see that. That does not Ken Wilber. Well, Sri Aurobindo said the same thing. He said if you're going to get anywhere in the spiritual world, you have to be able to stand back and see uh, the machinery of the mind objectively. And so every stage involves a standing back and seeing what's in front of you. Not denying it, not repressing it, standing back into a whole uh, more open space. Uh, so meditation is a way, uh, yeah, yeah, I hear you. Uh, Another 30 seconds. So meditation is very good. Unfortunately, uh, you know, it takes a lot of time. But there are a lot of other things. I think good education is one of those deals that's going to take over life of its own. Um, I, I'm a great believer in education and getting involved with other communities. Lots of ways we learn and grow. I'm not denying any of them. Uh, well, the only thing I'm saying in my 12 minutes in plus is that if we want to actualize these kinds of values, we have to promote them. Uh, we can best promote them through helping people grow to the place where these values are real for them, and it's what they live. 